So carotid baroreceptor stimulation um, creates a signal that goes from the carotid sinus in an afferent fashion to the brain. And once it gets to the brain, the brain actually integrates that signal and creates two efferent signals, one to the sympathetic nervous system and suppresses the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. And the second is it augments the parasympathetic system. So in patients with heart failure, particularly heart failure and a reduced ejection fraction, their sympathetic activation is high and their parasympathetic activation is low. This device reverses that so that it suppresses sympathetic and augments parasympathetic. And we think that that's um, the main mechanism of action which distinguishes it from other neuromodulation therapy. BAT, or baroreflex activation, um, in the clinical trial that we have done, both in phase two, hope for HF, and phase three, which is beat HS, has demonstrated that it's improved the quality of life using a quality of life questionnaire, and it's improved six minute hall walk, which means exercise tolerance. In addition, it's reduced a, an important uh, signal biomarker, which is NT proBNP. So the benefits are improved symptoms, improves exercise capacity, and it, it's supported by this objective marker of NT proBNP. So this device is going to make people feel better. So the design of BDHF took advantage of what's called the 21st Century Cures Act. And within that, there's, there's a, a, a program that's called the Breakthrough Devices Program, which has been embraced by the Food and Drug Administration and the Device Division and allowed us to create a unique clinical design um, which targets filling the unmet need in this group of patients, which is symptomatic relief. So this is designed through the break, Breakthrough Devices program um, and takes advantages of the flexibility of that program to create this, this design. To date, uh, BDHF has definitively demonstrated that the use of BAT compared to control improves exercise tolerance as measured by a six minute hall walk to 56 meter difference, which is a critical and important um, measurement of improvement of exercise capacity. It's improved quality of life as measured by Minnesota Living with Heart Failure Questionnaire by 14 points. And it has reduced NT proBNP by 25%. Each of those metrics, each of those measurements has important implications to both short-term and long-term therapy in this group of patients. So BDHF is a continuing uh, trial. We're going to enroll 73 more patients to make a total of 480 patients. The 480 patients will be followed for as long as it takes to get to 320 um, morbid and mortal events, meaning when we get to 320 heart failure hospitalizations or mortalities, then we'll be able to do the next post-marketing, what we hope is a post-marketing step to prove an improvement in morbidity and mortality. As it stands, the symptomatic phase of this trial has already been submitted to the FDA for PMA approval. Um, we hope that that's approved and then um, we'll be able to continue this in a post-marketing um, um, post uh, manner.